back through and play that same song again, and you're gonna play. I mean, you're gonna play the the lead, and you're gonna play that uh, that mid range uh, G, and you're gonna play the lower range, and I'm just gonna keep a chop going. And what we're doing is we're gonna we're gonna start having a discussion about how the voice of the chord that you use had technically needs to be manipulated based on who, who's singing, whether it's a male voice or female voice, or if it's a certain instrument taking an instrumental break, so that what you wind up with is hearing the instrumental played or the voice sung clearer based on what you're doing backup wise you don't want to really stay in the same range you're going to have some bleed over but you're not you don't want to stay in the exact same range where they're singing or where there are other instruments being played uh, so you're going to kick it off again and we'll just go through it um, either once or twice and just to kind of get a you want to talk about, um, I mean, like I said, this little session is, is more geared toward backup. So um, even though we're you know, playing through the melody and everything, um, when you're playing, of course, your ideal for while somebody's, like if a mandolin player is playing, you're going to be chopping on the banjo, on the offbeat. So your, your backup is going to mimic this. It's just going to be on that second and fourth beat of the measure. Okay. Depending on what your ensemble is, depending on whether it's a jam session and you've got five banjos or if you're the only banjo or whatever it happens to be, you have to make a decision on how much to play. Do you do a lot of roll? Do you do a combination of rolls and a chop? Uh, do you do any kind of fill in? You know, if, if the song has a lot of um, a lot of measures where there's like two or three beats, then those are opportunities to do fill ins. But you also don't want to dominate and try to be the one that's the only one that's doing those fill ins. So you're it's a constant process of thinking while you're doing this. But at the same time, even though there's from a musical standpoint, there's an exact science to it. Like I said a little bit ago, it's it's very difficult to be thinking this person is going to sing a C note, so I need to be hitting an E note or whatever. You know, all those things. The technicality is it is there, but it's harder to do that while you're in the middle of playing. So what you have to learn how to do is more by the voice of the instrument that's playing you want to counter that. So if it's a high range instrument, like if it's a mandolin taking a break or a fiddle taking a break, you would want to concentrate your chord pattern down toward the lower end of the neck so you're getting a lower octave chord as much as possible. But if it happens to be a dobro playing the instrumental break or an acoustic guitar and they're playing their instrumental break in the first position, or if it's a male voice singing that in that area, of the, uh, um, that vocal range, then you would shift up and you'd play those chords more toward the center of the, of the banjo neck so that what you're doing is you're capturing, your, you know, there's still probably going to be some bleed over, but you're capturing more of the higher octave while that person's singing the lower octave. And then if it happens to be a female vocalist while you're do, doing the same exact song, maybe in a different key even if they are tending to sing in a higher range that maybe more mimics a mandolin neck or fiddle neck, then that's where you shift back down to the lower end. And like I said, you're, it, it is a constant. Right now, while you're still very much at a beginner level, your main thing is to know the chords and play, be able to play at least one version of them. But 
at one of your goals is to get to a point where you're so proficient at, at your chords that you can start thinking in terms of this person's singing in this range, I need to back up the person in a little bit higher range or a little bit lower range so I can hear exactly what's going on. So now I wanna play it one more time. I'm gonna take the instrumental break this time and I want all you guys to play in that middle range G, that middle range G and sing it there while I take my break and then we're gonna play it one more time and you're gonna go back to the opposite and you're gonna hear a difference as you're listening. You're gonna hear that all of your chords are really technically in the exact same range I'm playing. And then the next time we play it, we're gonna go back to you playing the lower range and you're gonna hear a difference in where my, my voice on this mandolin is gonna be heard better because you're counteracting the, the different voice. So we're starting off with you guys playing in the middle range, okay? I'm gonna play my instrumental right. One, two, three, G. You can hear that difference. So, so you basically just want to contrast. You're just, that's 